Hi boys and girls, welcome to our World Book Day event here at the Bradford City Stadium, hosted by Bradford City FC Community Foundation. We'd like to welcome all the schools across Bradford and the district, and all you boys and girls out there at home doing your homeschooling. I'd like to welcome our special guest here, Billy Bantam, and welcome to our World Book Day event. Now we've got Ollie Crankshaw, the Bradford City winger, He's got to be reading the League of Dreams. When you hear these words in the League of Dream, Jimmy, you've got to jump up in the air. When you hear Dream or Dreams, you're going to sleep. When you hear Bradford City, you're going to do a silent cheer. When you hear Billy Bantam, you've got to do a Bantam pose. And when you hear Never Stop Believing, you've got to point to yourself. Jimmy was a small boy with a big dream. He wanted to play football at Wembley Stadium. Jimmy was football daft. When he wasn't playing football in the garden or talking to his friends about football, he was watching football on the telly. Jimmy soon grew from being a small boy into a really tall young man. He left school and got a job working at the co-op. Being the tallest meant that he could reach things on the higher shelves that no one else could, could reach. Jimmy liked his, liked his job, but he had forgotten his dream. Sometimes you need a little bit of luck to help a dream come true. And today was Jimmy's lucky day. He was playing for his local team when a man came to watch. Later that evening, Jimmy got a phone call. Would he like to play for Bradford City? Of course he would. Now Jimmy was a proper f footballer, but it was hard work. City were going through a bad time and losing too many matches. His dream of playing at Wembley still seemed a long way off. When the new season started, there was a real buzz about the place. Jimmy met some old friends and a lot of new faces at the club. Gary, Andrew, Nathan, Naki and Rory were there. Mr Parkinson, the manager, gathered Jimmy and the other players around. If we believe in each other, he said, we can make our dreams come true. The trouble was, all the other teams were dreaming that it would be their big season too. After Christmas, City started to struggle. When they lost to Oxford, the club mascot, Billy Bantam, saw that Jimmy was disappointed. Chin up, Jimmy. He said, never stop believing. With things not going too well, City were pleased to have some cup games too. In the first round, they beat Notts County. Next, in the second round, they beat Watford. And after that, in the third round, they beat Burton. Two weeks later, in the fourth round, they beat Wigan. Then in the fifth round, they beat the mighty Arsenal. City were so close to Wembley. In the semi-final, Naki scored and City beat Aston Villa 3-1 at home. But they still had to play another game at Villa's ground. Nobody expected City to win. Villa scored an early goal. Now City were only winning 3-2. But then they got a corner. Jimmy jumped and thumped a great header into the top corner. Goal! The fans went wild and as Jimmy ran towards them, he knew that his dream was about to come true. Villa scored again, but it was too late. The final whistle went and Jimmy and Bradford City were going to Wembley. But dreams don't always turn, up, turn out as, as we hope. And sadly for Jimmy, this one turned out into a nightmare. The City players were nervous and lost the final by a whopping five goals to nil. Jimmy was upset, but he still remembered that remembered Billy Bantam's wise words, never stop believing. City might just have a second chance. If they could do well in their last few games, they could still make the playoff final with one big effort. Jimmy and his team, teammates did it. They were going back to Wembley. Because they had played at Wembley before, the City players weren't so nervous this time. Jimmy scored another fantastic header and it was City's turn to win easily. As Jimmy, sometimes dreams really can come true if you work hard and never stop believing. Now it's time for our Bantam's Big Read. So we're going to have 4.5 minutes of reading your book, what you've chosen today to read in front of us all here at the Bradford City Stadium.
it first half boys and girls an excellent 4.5 minutes of reading what i'd like you to do now is you're going to get your world book day sheet you're going to go down to the first half reading challenge which is predicting what's going to happen next in your book so think about what might happen in the next 4.5 minutes of reading in your book i'd like you to write that down in that box on your worksheet billy how's your reading going excellent well done boys and girls go out there have a fantastic second half and try your best enjoy your reading
done, boys and girls. This is the most important bit of our World Book Day, the Bantam's Big Read. You're going to go back to your worksheet. You're going to go to the box at the bottom. It's my pledge to reading. You've got to write in there a little pledge what you're going to do when you are reading going forward. My pledge I'm going to put down is I'm going to look at the man of the match of the last Bradford City game, which was Levi Sutton. His number was 22. So I'm going to pledge to read 22 pages up until the next Bradford City game. If then Lee Novak becomes the man of the match, he's number nine, I will read nine pages in my book until the next Bradford City game. You can put whatever you want down there. Don't have to be like mine. It can be anything you want to do. Billy, can we give a big cheer to the boys and girls who have read so fantastically well in their schools or at home? We'd hopefully see you soon in your schools and thank you very much from Bradford City FC Community Foundation. We hope you enjoyed the Bantam's Big Read. Yeah, it is a bit strange because obviously one of the main reasons you play football is for the fans to enjoy it and you to enjoy the fans. So uh, no, it is strange, but hopefully they'll be back in really soon. Uh, the main reason was the size of the club. Um, I don't think there's anything better when you're playing for such a big club with expectations and fans watching you uh, and them cheering your name. That was probably the main reason for me. Yeah, it's strange. Um, it's a bit like, especially at the start of the season uh, and the end of last season, it was a bit like a training games, but without sound and uh, silly now, you kind of get used to it. Um, so, no, it has been strange, but uh, you get used to it. Um, to be fair, I've played football since I was young, so I've always kind of had a football in the uh, pathway for myself. Um, but I was obviously I went to school and enjoyed school and that side of it. But no, I've always always played football really. Yeah, I think that's probably one of the the biggest parts of me probably uh, progressing through my career of uh, my mum and dad always being behind me. Uh, my brothers, they always believed in me, which gave me probably uh, the chance to play football right now.